what's up? This is Daniel Kaiser for GTTV, and I'm joined now by renowned physicist Dr. Michio Kaku as we break down one of the most popular franchises in gaming, Fallout, and discuss the science of games. Fallout takes place in a post-apocalyptic world 200 years after a tragic nuclear holocaust. How far-reaching would the effects be? Well, first of all, my advisor when I was in high school and college was Edward Teller, father of the hydrogen bomb. And he actually offered me a job designing hydrogen warheads. So I had to make a personal commitment as to whether I wanted to work toward a scenario like with your painting. Now remember that when the Roman Empire fell, it fell for a thousand years. A thousand years of chaos before we went back to the levels of 400 AD. A nuclear war is going to be much worse. So we're talking about perhaps civilization as we know it, crumbling for perhaps millennia. When a hydrogen bomb goes off, it of course creates a gigantic fireball shockwave that blasts everything out to maybe uh, 10, 20 miles, and then you have firestorms going out even farther. But fallout, fallout is radioactive dirt. All that dirt that is then hoisted into the atmosphere can go out for hundreds, thousands of miles. We have computer programs of what the United States would look like after a total nuclear exchange. In the first few hours, you just see dots on the, on the United States representing the fireballs. But then, as the weeks go by, you see this huge cloud essentially going over all the major metropolitan areas. The first two weeks are the worst. If you can survive the first two weeks, then chances are you can actually survive, if you call it that, uh, afterwards. This game takes place 200 years after an impact. Would we still be seeing adverse effects that far past? That's right. Remember that cesium, strontium, iodine have half-lives that make ordinary products radioactive for hundreds of years. Agriculture, as we know, will collapse. There'll be food riots because we are highly mechanized. All these people in the cities, for example, depend upon trucks and all this merchandise that's shipped through supermarkets. All of that will collapse. So the population of the Earth itself will be reduced to a fraction of what it is today. Scary! Yeah, <laughs> the population that would be there, would we be seeing genetically mutated people and also maybe advanced evolution species? Well, we all have this image of X-Men, that after nuclear war, everything will be radioactive, and we'll all be Wolverine, we'll all have laser blasts coming from our eyes. It don't work that way. Uh, for every advanced mutation, so to speak, we have thousands of mutations that don't even survive more than a few hours outside the womb, monsters being born. So, in other words, evolution is a very slow process. It's hit or miss, it's random. So don't expect the X-Men to emerge after World War III. It's interesting to experiment with these scenarios in the video game, but do you think there are enough safeguards in place to prevent this from actually happening in real life? It could actually happen in real life. Uh, between India and Pakistan, we have two neighbors that uh, hate each other's guts. They have fought several hot wars with respect to each other, and they are eyeball to eyeball with nuclear weapons, perhaps 60 to 100 nuclear weapons apiece. So that could be where it starts, and then of course China could be dragged into it, Russia could be dragged into it, and we might also be dragged into it if a few nukes flying, flying everywhere. Uh, New York goes up, Los Angeles goes up. Then, of course, there are going to be all sorts of cries for us to use our nuclear weapons, too. So it could start between India and Pakistan and escalate. Or a loose nuke, perhaps a terrorist bribes somebody in the former Soviet Union to get access to a nuclear weapon. Well, hopefully these scenarios will stay in the virtual realm, but we definitely appreciate your insight into them here on the Science of Games.